Greetings, beloved. It's so exciting to be with you today. Each day we become more and more acquainted with who we are spiritually and what Christ has done through his resurrection. And I know that as you're studying these messages and you're hearing them inside your spirit, God's revealing so many things to so many different people. We get many emails during the months talking about the things that God is speaking to you about. And it's very encouraging because I know that you know that the living Christ is inside you. You know it, but because we've been so conditioned to pay attention to our surroundings, we lose touch and forget about our reality in Him. So every time we make these broadcasts is to remind you of that present eternity that's on the inside of you, that eternal present moment that you can spend time in His presence and in remembering who you are before the foundation of the world. And we'll say that phrase over and over again because it's so critical for you to understand when you're being attracted by the things of this physical realm versus knowing what you know from the eternal realm. And that's the place where you know without learning. <laughs> so when you find yourself preoccupied with learning the things of this world, wake up and recognize you don't need to know what you already know because it's in you. It's always been in you. And as we said over the many messages, you can attract what you want when you realize that your thoughts and emotions are on the outside of your physical body. Your thoughts are not contained inside your brain. Your thoughts are actually in the spiritual dimension. So are your emotions. God placed that inside of your spirit. And your spirit is on the inside of you, the real you. So when you're thinking, understand that these thoughts are not being generated from the external, but they're actually being generated from your spirit then you can start to understand that God is always trying to speak to you. He's always trying to let you know that He's with you, that His love is in you, that His love and future are in you. So the difference between reading something out here and thinking about it is because when you read something external or you physically touch something external, you're drawing on your experiences from the inside. Think about that. Have you ever taken a battery, take two wires and put a wire on the positive and on the negative and wrap it around a nail? You make it an electromagnetic force. That nail becomes a magnet and it starts to attract all the other elements that can stick to this magnetic force. Metal objects will stick to a magnet, correct? So the same way your mind, which is not your brain, puts out this electromagnetic field, you start to become a magnet in your body. So this electromagnetic field that is now drawing to you from the external, because this external realm are objects, they're physical objects. You start drawing these physical objects to you because what you've been thinking about and feeling become this electromagnetic force that makes your body attract what you're thinking and feeling. Can you see that picture? Is it making sense? So if you want to experience something in this physical realm, you start thinking about the things that God has been putting in you. The thoughts of goodness, of love, of, of beauty, of all the frequencies that are above 
this physical dimension. The frequencies of death is what support the foundation of this world. We said that over and over again. That is a very low death frequency that everything in this physical realm lives and dies. That is the duality of this realm. Understand, this duality system that we live in physically has a life and a death. And that duality creates the poles inside of our body to attract what it is we want. So we come into this planet as a nail, so to speak, in this diagram. So the thoughts and the emotions are the positive and the negative charges that are inside you that will attract those physical things in this realm. Now, I want you to understand this. You have the power by God to attract heavenly things in this physical world. That's why he said, I'm giving you the authority over this dimension. How do you have authority over this dimension? It's when your frequencies are not fulfilled from the frequencies of this duality realm. When your ideas and your thoughts and your feelings and your emotions are tapped in to the love of Christ and what he's done, you will start to become this electromagnetic field that will attract all the goodness and the thoughts that God has been sending to you before the foundation of the world. This is very important and it's a very simple understanding if you'll take the time to recognize that when your thoughts and feelings are connected to this dimension you're going to attract the things of this dimension and you've already seen and heard all of the misery that's out there in this physical realm because that's what this world feeds on it feeds on the frequencies of death now so we're talking about the transition here today. I wanted to show you this for some of you who are going through problems right now, how to change that situation and circumstance in your life. Now, the transition that we're talking about is from duality to singularity, from being hypnotized to believe that this realm is real to awakening to the spiritual dimension that is on the inside of you from thinking about things of this realm, sin consciousness, to Christ consciousness. This is the transition we're talking about here, from death to life. So when you start to understand that if you are being attracted by the things of this world, it's because your antenna, your thoughts and emotions are pulling these things to you so that you're constantly meditating on those kinds of things. So you have to separate this duality. You have to recognize that you are whole. You are one in Him. There's no separation. And when you start seeing separation, you recognize that you're not living in the fruit that God has given you from the, before the foundation of the world. You're to live in abundance. You're to live in absolute peace and joy. As we see in the scriptures, when Jesus was born into this earth, and we've talked about it many times, He was the Word, and He became flesh. So when God spoke, Jesus was the physical manifestation of everything God ever spoke. Everything God would ever be is in Him. Where did we originate? In Him. So our physical manifestation needs to be the reflection of who Jesus was and who Christ is. So this is the transition we're talking about. Jesus had to come into this duality realm that was created by the first Adam in order to bring wholeness, in order to bring oneness, he had to come in and go through this duality to 
to show whoever would study him and receive him how to become one again. Everything Jesus came to provide for mankind through the scriptures was the reality of the duality becoming one. So you don't read about Jesus of Nazareth without understanding he became Christ. So the manna was a heavenly bread. And then who was the manna? Turn over to John 6. Most assuredly I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Now here's a very important understanding. Until Jesus returned the kingdom back to the earth, there was no life in this world system. And this world system is designed to kill, steal, and destroy because it was designed by Satan as a result of Adam's disobedience. So this whole foundation of this world system was created so Jesus could show mankind how to become one in him before the foundation of the world. The reality of that is not found in following a menu or a religion or a doctrine. It's in the understanding that God from the beginning already knew who would be his and who would not be his. It's not up to us. We are one in him. So your focus and your singularity depends on you recognizing your condition outside of Him or in Him. Not anything around you, not anything outside of you, but what is your condition? What is your position in this wholeness that God created through Christ? What is your condition? What is your position? I keep saying that because nothing else should distract you. If you're not living in this eternal present moment, it's because you don't recognize the wholeness that Jesus came to bring. It's not something that needs to happen in the future. It's already been done. So everything that happened in this transition from the old to the new was so that you could recognize when you're not living in Him. I'm going to make that clear. If you're looking for external changes in your life, then you don't recognize what was already done before you were even born. You see, this, this is what makes this so astounding when you recognize your position in Him. You're not going through anything that you're not bringing to you. If you're going through sickness, if you're going through problems, if you're going through circumstances, it's because you have drawn them to you because you feel like you're outside of Him. You understand? When you don't think you have what the Bible tells you you have, then you're attracting all the circumstances to validate your belief. So yes, you're gonna go through problems. Yes, you're gonna have sickness. Yes, you're gonna have trials and tribulations because you believed that you were outside of the promises and the fulfillment that Jesus did through Christ. That has to be really clear. That way you're not looking for someone to blame. You're not looking for a government to help you. 
You're not looking for anything that you don't have because it's already been placed in you. If you want something that will change your life, believe that you have it. <laughs> if you believe you have it and you don't let anything externally change that belief, you have it. Because the only way we aren't getting what we want is if the external conditions don't validate our belief. Is that clear? In other words, people always used to tell me growing up, I'll believe it when I see it. It's not real unless I can touch it, feel it, taste it, and smell it. If that is your reality, if that's what it takes for you to accept your condition, then you're never going to understand your spiritual authority to have what it is you believe. How hard is it for you to believe that you've got what Jesus said he gave you? Because if it's impossible to believe it unless you can see it, then you're living in this duality condition and you're not living in the wholeness of what he brought. This is what he's saying in these scriptures. You see, when Jesus came, as the living word, that living word fulfilled everything that would ever happen on this planet when he said, light be. Everything was completed. And Jesus came as the physical manifestation of that living word. So you need to see this in order for you to start changing the way you validate your reality. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. As the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. He who eats his bread will live forevermore. So Jesus is telling everyone in the sound of his voice that the reality of who he is is spirit and the way they live in this physical world is by eating bread and drinking liquids jesus said the spiritual realm depends on feeding on him eating his living word which is bread and blood so in Jesus defining himself, he's giving them understanding that they can't understand because they are so focused on the reality of this dimension. And this is why so many of us are having a hard time understanding our condition is because the words that we understand come from this dimension. But the words that Jesus speaks are what? spirit and their life. He says this in the same chapter. He said, the words I speak to you are spirit and they are life. So when Jesus talks about becoming the Christ, he's talking about that transition from Jesus of Nazareth to Christ. Look what it says in Acts chapter 2. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he says, himself the Lord said to my Lord sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool now remember in John chapter 6 Jesus was looking at his disciples and he says does this offend you that I'm talking about eating my flesh and drinking my blood when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this he said to them does this offend you what then if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? So over in Acts, he says, For David did not ascend into heavens when he died. Therefore, let all the house of Israel, in verse 36, know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. So you see that the transition 
from the old to the new was when Jesus became the Christ in the understanding of the ascension. You see, there's so much confusion about the ascension. When the disciples were watching Jesus ascend, there was an angel that came and said, this same Jesus, well, this same Jesus was not the same Jesus they saw in the flesh. He never was the Jesus in the flesh. Every word he spoke was spirit. Every word he spoke was coming from the dimension that nobody in the law could understand. He was speaking spiritual things, so what they saw leave never left because he was never flesh. He was the living word. Whatever it was that they were looking at was not who they understood it to be. Jesus was always spirit. Jesus was always the living word. Jesus was always showing a transition from the old to the new, not in following rules and patterns and regulations like the law, but in understanding the spirit that is in them. If we are to understand our condition, both spiritually and physically, it can't be from the circumstances in the physical realm. Spiritually, we are the physical because that's what all physical things come from. It says everything invisible is what made the visible, right? That's what it says in Romans. The physical was made from the invisible. So your physical body comes from the invisible you, who you are. So if you are experiencing things that are uncomfortable, frightening, that cause you to lose your understanding of your spiritual nature, it's because you're not feeding on His flesh and on His blood. You're not eating from Him. You're eating from the things of this world. He made it very clear in that description to the disciples. He was showing them by giving them an analogy of the physical realm of his flesh and of his blood. But what he was trying to show us is that the realm which we really are and who we really are does not consist of this physical dimension. Every day it has to be clear that what we're eating of must be spirit because if we're eating of the things of this world, then we're going to experience the circumstances that are the foundation of this world, which is the frequencies of death. Clear, right? So if you're going through situations in your life today that are scaring you, that are making you uncomfortable, making you doubt your relationship with Christ, take a step back and start understanding where are my thoughts focused? What am I actually feeding on? When I see something, what images is it causing me to see, believe, and experience? It's just in that observation that you start disrupting the program that is running on the inside of your brain. Because your brain and your mind are not the same thing. Your mind is spiritual and your thoughts are from the spirit realm. Your feelings are from the spirit realm. So when you try to compress that into your physical body and try to make your experiences all physical, then you're going to react to the circumstances in this dimension. This is so critical to understand. You are not physical. You are spirit. And you've heard the old motto that people talk about, it is what it is. No, it's not what it is. It's not what it is. We have to awaken to our spiritual condition and not be influenced by the things that we have been taught to believe. Because that is a hypnotic trance that Christ broke when he resurrected. Each one of you 
have such an amazing design on the inside of you. And if you start to feast on the thoughts of Christ, and you start to become more Christ conscious and less sin conscious, your ideas and your way of thinking will absolutely be changed. And this is a guarantee, but it won't happen overnight and you shouldn't become confused or uh, disgruntled. You should be absolutely confident that what Christ did when he overcame death was to destroy this frequency and the captivity that this world was in before his resurrection. You don't need deliverance. You just need to be focused on what he's done for you. You understand? You are absolutely perfect in the eyes of God because he sees your spirit. He's not interested in the sin consciousness that this world tries to survive in. So until next time, I will leave you with this.